Hi, this is Dr. Kimberly Leonard, and you're listening to Incredible Life Creator Podcast. My guest today is Patricia Eltinge. Patricia is a transactional analysis practitioner and a longtime leader of Dream Workshops. She is a personal dream consultant to business leaders, celebrities, and therapists. Her system of dream analysis incorporates concepts developed by Dr. Pat Allen in order to help others to understand the important information we can glean from the unconscious through our dreams. Patricia was inspired to investigate dream work in order to help herself overcome childhood trauma. Through her unique gift of dream reading and interpretation, Patricia provides guidance in appreciating the esoteric messages coming from our psyche. Patricia lives in Los Angeles and is also a holistic health expert and a medical advocate. Welcome to the podcast, Patricia. How are you? I'm great. So excited to have you on and learn about dreams. Thank you so much. So why don't we start by you telling us a little bit about you, where you grew up, where you started out, and how you got to doing what you're doing today. Yes, well, I grew up here in Southern California and had some time um, schooling in Europe, and uh, my studies led me in my college years to be interested in the arts. So I had uh, a lot of experience in the arts and then gravitated towards holistic health. So in 1980, I went to the School of Natural Healing and uh, studied with Dr. Christopher, and Dr. Jensen, and these famous icons in the natural healing world and developed uh, an herbal medicinal products company. I became a master herbalist and developed an herbal medicinal products company in 1980, ran an alternative health clinic with my former partner for many years. And then I gravitated more towards psychology, transactional analysis, and definitely the dream world became my niche. Wow, so that is quite a journey. So are, you're you're still doing um, health health care as as well as I'm a medical care. advocate. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I and that seems to be a a need today with the, our, the way the system is. People do need advocacy to mm -hmm. figure out their way through the medical world. Mm -hmm. Would you like to explain a little bit what that is? Medical advocacy ad. I can't say advocacy for people who well, don't you know. need somebody who might know a little bit more than what we one knows to help you ask the right go to your doctor's appointments with you ask the right questions uh help you determine whether you need a second opinion uh, uh um, bring all options to you so you can make uh um, rational decisions about your own health care and teaching people to manage their own health care. Wow. And how did you segue into the dream analysis? It seems well, that <laughs> got into, well, my, then my schooling after the School of Natural Healing many, many years ago, 70s, 80s. Uh, then I went, uh, it got into the, um, the Want Institute, which was psychology based. So that became my focus into transactional analysis, became a transactional analyst, and then then really got into the dream world. I oh, kept going down the rabbit hole and uh -huh. my niche became really the, the dreams. Got it. And so what is transactional analysis? Well, transactional analysis was developed by the uh, world-renowned uh, Eric Byrne in the 60s. So it came from Freud, Jung, uh, these down to Eric Byrne developed this newer system of de defining who we are and the different components of who we are. So there's our, uh, the parent, the child, the adult. So to help us um, communicate better with people and to understand where other people are coming from in their communication, and he wrote a very famous book for the lay people besides his textbooks he had a very famous book in the 60s called um games people play yes I and, and i'm okay you're okay mm -hmm. so that was for the lay population 
but his his deeper work for other psychotherapists really taught people how to communicate and change their life through communication. Mm -hmm. And how did you use what you were learning just for yourself? Because I was reading in your bio that um, part of the reason you went into that is to heal some of your own childhood trauma. Yes. Well, I, my uh, as a young child, I was kidnapped and molested at five. And I had recurring what I called then nightmares. And uh, we don't call them nightmares anymore. We call them just scary images because these scary images are brought forth from our subconscious, our unconscious mind to help us um, figure out what's going on and, and help us figure out what's bothering us and how we're reacting to our world. So... So yeah, and I, I know that's an issue for many people where they have this recurring nightmare. So if they're having that recurring nightmare, how do they handle that? How do they how do they use that to actually heal? Well, when you have a dream analyst like me, <laughs> you have someone to talk to who helps you decipher the images and the uh, messages and and it brings it down to what we can do about it through transactional analysis. So the images come through mm -hmm. from the unconscious, and then we have tools that we've developed to help us unscramble it and give us some direction on how we can go forth in life and not hold ourselves back because a lot of our, our traumas hold us back because they uh, uh, mark our behaviors. Yeah, and it's just so wonderful to hear that there's someone like you that can help people because I think it's a huge problem and people just didn't, didn't even know there was something that they could do. We don't, but there, there are images coming through on a nightly basis and there are uh, people say oh it was just a crazy dream i love that people think every i had a crazy dream oh it was just crazy well if we pay attention we can use these so-called crazy images to say oh that was a crazy image when you when you uh decipher it it's like a message in a bottle and it's written in greek cyrillic like you need to go somewhere to have somebody translate it for you because there's some important message that came through and you want to know what it is. So we have lots of um, uh, examples in the book, for instance, uh, there's a girl who was a uh, gal who was going through uh, mourning pre-morning her her mother was elderly and she was going to, to not in the far who knew when but her mother was elderly but she was having these dreams of black underwear hanging in the in the hanging in a doorway or something like this and I and what she was doing what her mind was doing the subconscious mind was giving her some preparation incrementally preparing her for the first layer of her mourning hmm. so the first layer of your of, of what's close to your heart is your uh, lady's undergarments uh -huh. so her unconscious mind was preparing her for the inevitable so that it's not such a shock when it does happen, you're gradually preparing yourself for things. That's one instance. Mm -hmm. So what do we consider a dream? You know, is it only what we experience at night? Is it our daydream? You, you want to know the difference between night dreams and daydreams? Well, uh, in some ways they're different and the nighttime there's actually something going on biologically called the, the glymphatic system, which is the cleansing of the brain and the chemicals and the brain is cleansing itself. Well, while that's going on, we, it's like a paper shredder 
also, and all the stuff that's gone through during the day is going through the paper shredder and and mixing it all up, but also bringing in things from uh, the past, the present, the future. That's what the beautiful thing about uh, dreaming is. There's no past, present, or future. So you can be using images from the distant past, uh, yesterday's past, uh, potential futuristic things, spaceship, whatever. So that's going on at nighttime. But in the daytime, we can have creative thoughts. We can be relaxed. You, you don't have this lymphatic uh, process going on. But we do encourage people to meditate. And you can process a lot of things while meditating. Um, so there is creativity going on or things you can utilize if you, and, and the more you practice and we have, if when you do, when one reads the book, um, there are techniques in how to capture your dreams and remember them. And this is a practice. This is a practice like a yoga practice. I don't know if you're familiar with yoga, but yoga is a practice. So it's not something you just achieve and you're there. It's something you practice. A tennis is something you practice. So it's that type of thing. We encourage people to keep a pad or recording device by the bed. And every night before you close your eyes, you tell yourself, I'm going to remember my dream or something else that you want to work on. And that you're pre your pre um, prompting your your sleeping time for re remembering your dreams and this state that you're going to go through between waking and sleeping and sleeping and waking upon waking is called the Lyman state. You'll see the word subliminal. It comes from Lyman. The Lyman is that state between from the back of the consciousness. So we are going to program ourselves in that state before we go to sleep. I want to, I have a big deal in my uh, world, in my business world, or I have to resolve something in my relationship. You program yourself, you go to sleep, and upon waking, you keep your eyes closed. There's a three to four four minute period upon waking that you are in the Lyman state. And as soon as you open your eyes, you're out of the state. So, and it only lasts three to four minutes. So it's a, like I said, it's a, this is a practice when you practice keeping your eyes closed, program yourself when you're going to sleep upon waking, keep your eyes closed and ask her what, what images was I, what images did I see? What, where was, it? think of locale, think of people, think of, in, uh, things we think in terms of uh, people, nature, and things. So uh, the, there are t different hierarchies of, of uh, dream images. So you, you just start jotting down with your eyes closed, scribble it somewhere or record it. Oh, I was in a forest. It was night. Maybe that's all you remember. Or, you, or maybe you might just remember, oh, I saw a dog, write down dog, if nothing more. So this is how you develop your practice. And then I have people who've been with me for years, and now they, they started out not, they, they used to say, I don't dream. Yes, I've heard I don't dream. dream. I'm one of those people who doesn't dream. First of all, everybody dreams, even dogs, cats, everything dreams. And this is a practice on learning to capture your dreams and remember them. And then that's just the beginning part of the practice. And that takes some time for some people too, just to get that part of it. Then you say, Oh, a cat. There was a cat. Okay. So then we learn what a cat, <coughs> what a cat represents. Excuse me. And in the book, we talk about the different, meanings of things, but then also things that have specific meanings to certain people. You might like cats, but somebody else who dreams of a cat hates cats. So I take that into consideration of that person's 
relationship or how they view a particular image in their dream. Somebody loves the ocean. Somebody else has a fear of the ocean, hates the ocean. So this is an interactive thing. It's not one, one size fits all. Wow, and that's making so much sense what you say because there have been times when I say, oh, okay, I want to remember my dreams, but as soon as they're like, I'm remembering them, I'm just, I know I'm about to wake up, I, the dream is vivid, and as soon Don't as open I open your eyes, eyes <laughs> it's like, God, I'm like, it's just, where did it go? How could I forget it in one second? Because you, it was, it, you remember it in the Lyman state. So that's why I say either a recording device or scribble it. Who knows? We don't, you don't have to write it perfectly. Just scribble cat, scribble beach, scribble mountains, whatever. There was a car. Oh, runaway car had no brakes. That's a good, you know, you know, good one. But anything you, while your eyes are closed, get it down and you build upon that as you go, then you can become more adept. And people then, like I said, people who've been with me for years have like, woo, they have a whole, they have a whole second life. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, yeah, just to have, be, have access to that information that is in us, but until we dream it, it's hard to access it. And even after we dream it, if we don't know how to write it down or do the practices, you decipher you're it. About, this, 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 this is, uh, that there's a, a, a a quote that's in the book um, from the Talmud that, that some people may know and it's uh, it's a dream unread no a dream uninterpreted is like a letter unread and that makes so much sense and I actually went all the way back to this the Bible times you know when Joseph interpreted the dream for mm -hmm. the pharaoh mm -hmm. and how it actually changed the whole world mm -hmm. because if he hadn't interpreted that dream the whole world would have starved at that so, the world at that time at that time so the, the dreams have been part of every culture and i'm really it, i i really want to bring it back to our western culture how important it is and every culture from historically has honored the dream world. And there are iconic images, that, there's cross-cultural iconic images, and we call these archetypes. Mm -hmm. And there are ones that are like that, archetypes, iconic images. And then there are ones that are specific, that are very personal. And it, it, it just it's a tree with lots of branches. Mm -hmm. So if um, you're talking about the archetypes, what are some of the main ar archetypes that people would say, oh, this always means this. In most cases, this is going to mean this. Well, we, we have, in, in my system, uh, I talk about in terms, I said before, people, nature, and things. So uh, when there are images in terms of things, which would be a table, a rug, a car, things the um, those are further away of coming to consciousness of, of getting the message then the next level up the ladder is nature that would be trees ocean river things of na uh, animals those are things of nature you're getting a little closer to getting the message and as we go up the ladder the higher of the next hierarchy the top of the ladder to really coming to consciousness when we're dreaming of people mm -hmm. and then we're really close to getting the message and we're being more we're being more open to understanding what is coming through for us so within those categories there are specifics within those categories of people nature and things now i know sometimes i've dreamed and all of a sudden, this person I almost had forgotten about, I don't know, from grade school or from, <laughs> you know, someone I hadn't seen in years and had no reason to be in contact with, they pop into my dream. And I think, 
Where yes. does it come from? Well, we have a little database in there. See, we store all these different character types and our dreams are, are like plays to help us get a message. So when somebody is, is, has a particular character type, it's sort of like a central casting. So you pick, oh, who, what kind of character type was that person? And that is actually everyone in your dreams and everything in your dreams is an aspect of yourself. So you're, you're going to go through your database in central casting here, and you're going to pick one of these to work out your scenario that you need. So when that person came up to you, I would say to you, as your dream analyst, I would say, what, what character type was that person at the time? And you, I, you would tell me, oh, she was very gregarious and fun loving or whatever, or, or she was a bitch or you know, whatever. <laughs> and it, so then I say, oh, okay. And then what that person was doing in the dream. So I say, well, what aspect of you is that in what, like, what's been going on? Then I get into that. And that's where TA comes in. I go, what's going on in your life where that has come out in you? Mm -hmm. how are you behaving in what situations yesterday the day before last week whatever when you had this dream was going on where that character type came out in you mm -hmm. yeah. oh that's so interesting so you're just interweaving the dream the psychology the the essence of the person and then i'm you're saying oh well i did that i did such and such and this this uh, aspect of me did show up then and that's interesting i wonder if it's going to affect my life do i really want to do i want to behave that way again or do i want to put that in check or did that bring me a good outcome or do i think that's going to bring me a good outcome with, do, with that behavior in that situation so you can start seeing how you're navigating through life with your unconscious mind analyzing you all the time and giving you messages and feedback on how it's serving you mm -hmm. your behaviors and your reactions and your feelings and your thoughts yeah and as you're talking about that i'm thinking about you know the, the um throughout life we are in different seasons and we're around different people i'm thinking about you know a therapist who works with people they're around people that are speaking about really different ideas sometimes wild sometimes normal a police officer is around more people who are not quite ethical more <laughs> marginal marginal you know so we're we're around different people and we so we get different input during the day and how does that affect how we're actually dreaming and analyzing well we may use them and we may put them the, the different types in our central casting and we may call upon it sometime if it pertains to us and, and our lives and how we're behaving and how we're perceiving things so i may use uh, there may be some, uh, some time where a policeman comes into my dream let's say or something like that so it's that authority we look at a policeman that's an authoritative authoritarian situation you know, so where was I yesterday where my, where my behavior was authoritarian or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we use these character types to describe ourselves and our own behaviors and our own thought, thoughts. And now I also have to go to our system, uh, which is really, really getting into the difference between our feminine and our masculine sides of us. And we all have both. So at different times, we're accessing more of one than the other. And so in the book, we talk about the yin and the yang of the, the, the feminine and the masculine sides of us and how it serves us and when it serves us best. When it, and, and we will get feedback from back here, bubbling through, and will give us that information. So um, when we're using those parts of ourselves, I'm thinking about when you're in a relationship, you know, either with a, like a partner or a close family member, how do we take what we're learning from the dreams and help ourselves in, in daily life? 
Well, you see your dream life, your dream world will give you that information. It will give you positive or negative uh, uh, undertones or, or dramatically so. If it looks like you're going to be driving off a cliff and you allow it, that, so this direction that you're going in this particular set situation is going to take you off the cliff and, and be some of your demise. But there are times where... Uh, there's an aspect of yourself that needs to have a demise because it no longer serves you. So I always encourage people too to let the dream flow, watch the dream as a of your as you're watching a movie. And sometimes uh, there are things that are scary, but if you just watch it, and then knowing you become more lucid about your dreams. You don't have to interfere, intervene, but you can then be cognitive and then say, what is this that I, uh, that I don't need anymore? What part of, what aspect of my personality or my behavior is not needed in this situation or ever? <laughs> but, um, so, there are ways we and there are ways we can divert. Us. We almost uh, um, tr what we're doing here is really training our, us people to develop their own sixth sense. And the more you do this work, the more you practice. I keep using the word practice. You develop your sixth sense, and then you have you have a knowing. You will know sooner how, what is, what is the best thing for you to do? People will ruminate less. People will have their own answers uh, more quickly on what they need to do about in situations, it, whether it be business or relationships, you will develop your own sense. And I, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to teach people to, to develop their own sense. So not just to rely on me, but to, I'm teaching people to rely on what these messages are teaching them themselves. It almost sounds like you're um, training your gut. Like, you know how they say, trust your gut, but sometimes people don't trust their own gut, <laughs> but they say, trust your gut is that, you know, is that a piece of it where you're actually training it? What's safe, what's not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, gut is feeling is a feeling and the, the mind is a thought. So we are trying to integrate our thoughts and feelings and know the difference. So our thoughts are yang, our feelings are yin. So our thoughts are the masculine, mm -hmm. our feelings are the feminine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we want to work towards uh, androgyny in our being so we can work together between our thoughts and feelings. And I'm just wondering too, sometimes I think to myself, am I just um, making this all up in my mind with the dream? And, you know, um, I tend to have a very artistic mind, so I can see some really wild pictures, you know, like something right. with the wrong head and body going together, you know, just strange pictures or really some really different kinds of colors. And, and am right. I just making that up or is that just who I am and that's why I'm dreaming that way no it's telling you something so if you're telling me that the wrong head is on the wrong body there's some there's some form of disconnect at that time you, you then I ask the person what's going on at this time where you feel a disconnect mm -hmm. between your thoughts and your feelings and then um, when you talk about colors that's another good thing you brought up we have a chapter in the book about colors and the meanings of colors and uh, that's all important too. And so I, as you get more practice at this, uh, you then will remember color and you'll write down specific colors you saw because that all has nuances for you, mm -hmm. for your, your uh, personal growth. Yeah, and that makes sense because even during the day, the colors, when I see them, they have different nuances. Mm -hmm. And I've heard They're going to have psychological nuances too, different to go with it. that's what they're depicting wow and what about people who say they don't see any colors they always everything's black and white well that's okay too but uh, you'd be surprised people who used to say they never dreamt 
And then they would say, then like three years later, some sooner, some people they oh, now all of a sudden I see colors. I see wild things. I, I can fly like this all over. But it's with the, it's really with dedication. And it's people who, 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 who buy it and said, okay, I'm really going to try it. I'm going to do this. And they do it. They practice and they become great dreamers and really, really move forward in a lot of areas in their lives. Which is yeah, amazing that you can use that to, to do that. Yeah, well, you see, it, it's a kind of a backdoor entrance. It's the back door mm -hmm. <laughs> to get to the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when you mentioned flying, that um, made me think, I know as a child, I, I would dream about flying. So what does flying have? Does it have a certain significance? Yes, yes. Fl flying typically uh, uh, means you're up in your head because up, up in dreams is, is the masculine. So you are in the work mode. It means you're in the work mode. You're in the doing mode. You're in the yang mode. You're, so when you come down, when people go downstairs, down into a cave, down, you're in your feelings. You're in your yin. So up and it's yang, masculine doing action forward conquering competing controlling going down anywhere when you're moving down walking down the stairs going down an elevator when you're in the basement anywhere down you're in your feeling set centeredness you're feminine that is so interesting i'm remembering i know um like in hypnotherapy They'll have you walking down the stairs. You're always going down somewhere. That's right. And then you come right. back up. So we're it's, going down into our feelings. Mm -hmm. In your feelings, yes. Getting into your feeling centeredness, into your body, mm -hmm. out of your head, into your body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, this is kind of a different question. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a friend years ago that she said she had a twin as far as dreaming when they'd go to sleep she said she would dream with her twin and i'd never heard that before or afterwards fascinating and they were actual twins they weren't twins they were friends oh they were friends who, a female who, and a male they weren't like she was married they weren't romantically involved they were just friends but they would dream together and dream I, together in what in what i, I think they had a similar dream every night no, I'd have to talk with her. I, it's, uh -huh. it's possible. And I, I've heard of some people sharing. They, I had a family recently that had a shared dream, and that was an ancestral dream. Uh, but that was another thing altogether. But um, it can happen. But I would like to have the specifics if I talk to a person like that, two people like that. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very different, too, because I thought it has to be personal, <laughs> the yeah. dream. Mm -hmm. So... Um, so now you said, you know, people come and work with you. Um, how do you work with people when they come to see you? Well, typically like this, I, uh, on the phone, uh, I, people can see me, but they don't need to see me in person. I, I work predominantly on the telephone. I work with people all over the world and I do workshops and, um, uh, I'm going to be doing a workshop at, at a resort in February for Valentine's weekend on dreams. Uh, from the heart. So I'll be doing a weekend workshop there in uh, Paso Robles at a, a nice resort called Allegretto. So I do workshops. I've done workshops for many years. I actually taught a workshop at the tra International Transactional Analysis Convention on the Queen Mary uh, several years ago to therapists, other therapists and coaches. And that was it. That was that was a, a tough crowd, but they loved it, and it, it was great. So I teach lay people, and I work with individuals uh, from people from all walks of life and families. But one on one with dreams is is the best. But uh, but also workshops. I mean, dream workshops are terrific. I love you know teaching dream mm -hmm. workshops too. Yeah, and when you're working with a the therapist, are you actually teaching them to do what you're doing with their clients? Yes, what I like when I was uh, teaching at the um, convention, I was teaching them how to how this system because this is a very my book lays it out. It's called the Dream Class 
for a reason. It's the dream class, know your dreams, know yourself, but it's laid out based on my many years of, of teaching how to uh, workshops with my former, my mentor, uh, Dr. Pat Allen, and we did that for many years. And so this book came out of, out of those teachings and it's laid out systematically so that people can start their own dream groups. That's my goal. Oh, awesome. So they, you actually have groups of people. So how does the, the group work when they, are they getting together physically or virtually or? They, well, there are some people who start their, uh, some coaches I know start their dream groups virtually and other people have group, like group therapy. Some therapists I know have give, had a group therapy sessions, let's say every Friday evening, and now they're introducing and people come, they come to their weekly group meeting and they each bring in, or two or three people bring a dream and they discuss a dream and using the, the, the book dream class and and discuss the dreams in this fashion in this system oh that's beautiful i love that mm -hmm. I, I just love that that people can get together and, and share that because how often do you and go, get in there and share what's going on with your yeah inside right so it would be very therapeutic very very and sharing it it's just so it's also very uh liberating mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm that. guessing that these groups would be kind of long-term groups where the same people would be going all the time, so they the feel so they they can uh, feel open to do that. Yes, these most people are involved who are involved in groups. It's regular regular groups. Now, with when I do a dream uh, workshop, the workshops will maybe a one-day workshop and mm -hmm. uh, a class, and but the people who sign up for it, we we do often say bring a dream with you and then we discuss it within the class and the workshop. I love that. So um, do you feel like dreams ever kind of tell us future events? Like you've heard of people say, you know, they, they saw something in the dream and they knew something was going to happen. Is that valid? Typically, typically no, but, but yes. And another aspect because there's, Things that we know that we don't realize we know. In other words, we prepare ourselves, like I told you about the girl who was wearing her uh, black underwear, which she didn't even own black underwear, but she mm -hmm. dreamt of wearing black underwear as a, as a premonition uh, of getting ready for a funeral. The, the clothes, okay. So we, we, we sense things, <clears throat> but... Uh, in our conscious waking life, we censor things that are uncomfortable or that we don't really want to know. Yeah. So as you develop your dream life and you accept the messages that are coming through, sometimes you start to go, whoa, whoa, wait, this is a, this is a little too much. But you get used to the fact that, wait, it's okay for me to know things. Mm -hmm. I know more than I thought I knew. And right. then you start trusting that. And so a lot of that is that people really do have a sense of what's coming, but they have blocked it out because it's not necessarily comfortable. Yes. Yeah, so we just want to think about what we want to happen. Right. And, and that, you know, we're not thinking about everything I'm thinking about in, even in business. I mean, there are little clues in daily life. There are subtle clues you might there, that you pick up on and you are consciously knowing you're picking up on an inflection in someone's voice, a way, the way they looked away for a half a second when you were talking to them, the way there are little clues all the time in our lives that we uh, imper, almost imperceptible, but it still registers back here and it's stored right. so when we dream then we can access that it's, and be able because to because it's not filtered when it's back here mm -hmm. and and it comes through with the dream it's not filtered yeah so when you work with um business people on this are there certain things you work with them on as far as just 
um, understanding interactions with other business people or with their business or yeah well they one of the chapters in my book I want the, the, the one of the last parts of the book is um, is uh, uh, actual clients with their stories case histories and there is a, a, a guy in here business guy and uh, he his partners, uh, he, there's a dream and it's how to, how to, and go read the dream. So there's a piece of the dream and then there's the interpretation and there's a little more piece of the dream and the interpretation. So it shows you how his dream was talking about his business dealings <clears throat> and, and how he knew what he was going to have to do and his partners after he'd been working with me for at least I don't know, a couple of years and his business partners started saying y you uh, are psych you're psychic they started telling him he was psychic and how did he know things before they happen and how did he know how did he know to make that move before they even knew that was happening over there because he was on to things through this work he became much it, he the access to what he knew was more fluid mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing and I, that i feel excited just thinking about that so you've mentioned the book several times where can people get the book the book the dream class by patricia l tinge e-l-t-i-n-g-e -E, is found on amazon or my website, www.patriciaeltinge.com, and also at veronicalanebooks.com, my publisher. And it's, uh, it's out there. All right. And if they go to your website, they can also find out how to work with you one-on-one -on -one or find out when your workshops are. And yes, absolutely. Patriciaeltinge.com. Awesome. And just going back to a personal note now, what do you feel like has given you the most um, happiness, fulfillment in your life? You've done so many things. You have so much knowledge. I'm just blown away by your knowledge. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> what, what has given you the most happiness and joy in your life and fulfillment? Oh boy, I guess, you know what? Being really being grateful to have been born in this day and age in this country, because I have lived outside the country and I know how fortunate I am to be living here and having the opportunity as a woman to do what fulfills me and um, which is sharing whatever I learn. What I always want to be doing is never stop learning. I'm not done yet mm -hmm. and always share what I learn. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the podcast and for sharing so much of what you've learned, probably just a little bit compared to all you've learned, but th thank you so much for sharing that and for making that available to people. Cause I, I had no idea that I could actually use my dreams to make my life a better. <laughs> never did. So it's awesome. Thank so, you for having me. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. We will have uh, talk to you again soon.